Good morning, it's Rebecca from Rebecca Inc. Today we are going to draw a zebra together. What you need to join in is a piece of paper, a pencil, a marker, and an eraser. So if you haven't gathered up your supplies yet, pause me and go gather them up. All right, you are back. I'm gonna move my guide and we are gonna get started. You are gonna grab your pencil. I'm gonna use a marker so that you can see me better, but you're using a pencil. We are gonna start in the upper portion of our paper today with two ovals. Um, you're gonna get your whole arm going from your shoulder. And we're gonna draw an oval right about here on your paper your arm going from your shoulder and go around and around kind of air draw it and when you get that shape set your pencil down it's going to be about this big my paper is eight and a half by eleven all right so you're going around and around and around and around and you will notice that your lines are not perfect um, you've got some that are wavery some that are inside your oval some that are outside your oval um, I'm going to ask you to be patient with yourself and just let this part happen. These are going to be our guides and in the long run we will erase all of them. So try to have a little fun with it and be a little loose, okay? Up above that oval, let's draw another one about the same size and these guys are going to overlap. So about like that, draw a nice oval around. You can really see on this one um, the inconsistencies in my shape. But um, that won't matter. The overall shape, if you look in the center of it, the overall shape is there. Off to the right of that, let's draw another oval, just like that. Round and around you go. This one's a little smaller, so I'm planting my elbow. I'm just moving my forearm. Inside that, tucked up toward the top, another oval. Lots of ovals at the beginning of this guy. Very good. And off to the end of it, we are going to draw a triangle. Our triangle is going to be about this big. It's going to live right here. Now, if you wanted to see that full shape, there's the triangle, but you don't have to draw that last line. Just going out and back into your oval. Let's go over to the other side and do the exact same thing over there. This one I'm going to angle up a little bit. You see how my lines are not perfect and I'm going around and around and around to get my shape. I'm not worrying at all about how that looks right now. Um, it will make sense in the long run. Let's do that same thing on the end of that one. Nice long skinny triangle there. If you need to tilt your paper, um, that's what I would normally do. I would tilt my paper, but I've got a camera above me. So um, I'm not going to tilt my paper and get you guys confused. But if you need to tilt your paper to get some of these shapes, if it feels more comfortable, please tilt your paper. All right, from this oval connecting over to that first oval we drew, we're going to draw a little diagonal line that will create a connecting triangle there. I'm just going to fill in that little space right there with a simple little line. Um, okay, moving on to the face of our zebra, we're going to draw a diamond shape right like this that's going to come off of that first oval that we drew. So just about in the center of that oval, maybe off to the left just slightly, we're going to plant our elbow and draw a diagonal line. Now if I plant my elbow and I move my whole forearm and go back and forth and back and forth, that kind of gives us that exact diagonal that we want. Um, same thing, other side. Now, if, if you want, you can rotate your paper or you can kind of, for this one, uh, touch your pencil down where you started your other line and drag your arm, your whole arm from your shoulder and it will give you that nice diagonal. From there, same, same concept, um, drag your arm down to get that point and back up. This one I'm planting my elbow and moving just my forearm and it's going in that shape. Next up I'm going to just slice right down the center of that diagonal and extend out just a little bit. So 
put your pencil at the tip of that diamond and go right down the center. It's not quite, see how mine's not quite? Um, that's fine. All right, where we had the corners of our diamond shape, we're gonna add in some circles that will be where our eyes are going to live. So over here, let's start on the left. I'm gonna get a circle going about this big. Round and around we go to get that shape. And then going over to the right, round and around we go. Let's get that oval or circle shape, goodness. All right, inside this circle, this eye we're not gonna see, so we're not gonna add anything else to this one, but inside this one, we will see the eye. So inside this circle, we are gonna add another circle at the bottom right-hand side of that. We're gonna add another circle. Now that circle is smaller, so I'm planting my wrist and I'm using my fingers. I'm air drawing it, I'm going around and around and around, and when I feel like I have the shape, I set my pencil down and keep going around and you'll get a nice circle that way. Um, inside that circle, let's draw a littler circle. This will be the highlight in our eye, so a little circle inside there. You can decide where you want that circle to live. Um, and as you notice, as you do more and more of these drawings, wherever you put that, it kind of shows uh, where our animal is looking. I'm gonna pull my blind down here. I wasn't expecting sunshine. All right, now we are going to add in an arc above that eye shape. So we're going to plant our wrist and in the natural motion that our hand is gonna go in, we're gonna create an arc over that eye. All right, moving on from there, we're gonna add in a rectangle that's gonna become like the snout of our zebra. So we are gonna go straight down and over. You can go over these lines as many times as you want to get your shape. And back. So it kind of follows that same um, path down. I'm going to make a nice rectangle there. Let's add in a few connecting shapes at this point. Let's go back up to this eye that's off to the side there. From the top of that circle back to this first oval that we drew, we're just gonna draw a nice diagonal line that's gonna connect those shapes. Right like that, nice diagonal line. And then from about the middle of that eye circle, we're gonna draw another diagonal line down to the rectangle that we just drew. Very good. All right, underneath this right eye, we're gonna draw another circle. Now this circle is gonna be just a little bit bigger. It's gonna be about this size, and that is gonna end up being the jaw of our zebra. Just like that. While we're in a circular mode, let's do the nose of our zebra. We're gonna do a series of two circles here for this one. Again, these are all big enough where you can get your whole arm going from your shoulder. When you involve your larger movements, your larger muscle movements, um, it's easier to arrive at these shapes. Just below that and off to the side, just ever so slightly, another circle. Very good. And before you know it, you've drawn all these very simple shapes and you have built a really intricate drawing. So um, I hope you can see that starting to happen soon. Inside that first circle that we drew for the nose, we're gonna add a couple ovals for the shape of our zebra's nostrils. Now off to the left, our oval is gonna live right at the edge and almost peek off of that circle, just like that, angle it in. These are smaller shapes and then Add a diagonal from there, another oval for that nostril. Now, we're gonna create on this one a mimicking arc there. Just outside of where your oval ends on the right-hand side, create just a line that mimics that and connects back in. If we give this a little highlight, it's gonna give it some dimension. Then let's do the same thing we're gonna do on uh, the base of that first circle that we drew, we're gonna add in that same kind of same kind of line. 
so we know where to give ourselves a highlight a little later on. Let's connect our mouth back to our jaw with a nice diagonal line right here. Um, we're going to go kind of around that circle and head back to that jaw with a diagonal line. I'm planting my elbow and moving my hand back and forth to get that. And off of that, a little connecting triangle to give us just that right shape. All right, we have a few more lines to add. From this back oval, which is going to end up being our ear, we're going to draw a diagonal line coming down right like that. Just draw a nice diagonal line. To get that shape, I am planting my pencil and I am moving my whole arm from my shoulder. I'm pulling my hand down the page. And at the end of that, I'm going to add in another diagonal. That could be a triangle if you wanted it to be, but I'm trying to get these drawings in the fewest uh, amount of lines as I can for you. And then parallel to this line, so it's going to be going on the same angle, we're going to draw another diagonal line coming down from that jaw down, or chin maybe, right about there, down. Now if yours is over just a little bit from here, um, that's fine. It's just going to make your neck a little bit thicker. And off of that, another diagonal line going the other way. Now we're going to give ourselves uh, one guide here. Um, just over from that diagonal line we created coming down from the chin down, we're going to draw another line there. Same uh, angle, just nice and light with your pencil. Give yourself a little guide. All right, um, one more guide. Right above the eye where we drew that arc above the circle, we're gonna draw just slightly above there, another arc, just like that. Very good. And let's do one more guide. These are gonna help us get our stripes going the right direction. From the edge of our jaw circle, straight up from there, just give yourself a nice hint of a line. It doesn't have to be um, anything really dark, just a hint. Their stripes end up going in a few different directions and some of these lines that we've created are gonna help us get those. One last shape and then we are ready to switch to our marker. Um, just like we did when we drew the butterfly, we're gonna do this one in a few steps because I think it gets too um, confusing otherwise. So on the back end where you drew that nice diagonal line for the top of your zebra's neck, we're gonna add in a nice long oval. It's not too wide, it's gonna be about that big. This is gonna help us know where to put our zebra's um, mane. Around and around you go there. Now, let's add in a few details with our pencil that are gonna help us when we go to color things in. So where we had these two ovals up here. Actually, let's create one more guide. Touch your pencil down to the tip of this diamond, plant your rest, and move your hand in that natural arc it's gonna go in and create a nice arc shape heading back into that oval on the top of its head. It's gonna help us know where to plant, start our, our mane. From that arc we just drew. We're going to draw straight lines, three straight lines, just like that, right up. And then go over a little bit, do three more straight lines, three more. And then now we're going to ride this, this top part of this with, with our three straight lines. So just skip a space and draw three straight lines. Skip a space, three straight lines. Skip a space, three straight lines. Now we're going to do the exact same thing. Now our lines are going to continue to be straight writing down the, the neck of our zebra, but they're going to point out at an angle. So plant your wrist and just touch your pencil down to that neck line and just flick it out. Three straight lines, just like that. You decide how far apart your zebra's stripes on its mane are going to be. These are just going to give us a guide so you don't have to do this blindly with your marker. Um, as you get more and more into these drawings, you might feel comfortable skipping some of these steps and just going right to your marker. Uh, that's what I like to do. I don't like to draw anything with pencil, really. I usually just use the marker. But um, as we're learning, we can do it with pencil, build up the shapes, and then switch over to our marker. So let's 
set down our pencil and get out our marker and we're going to draw over some of these lines and um, then we'll go back to our pencil and sketch in where our stripes are going to be. So let's start at the upper left hand portion of the head. We're going to go from um, from where you drew those lines for your, your mane. We're going to go around the top part of that oval onto this connecting triangle and then ride these shapes around the outer edges around this oval up to the tip of that triangle. So go ahead and trace over those lines right there. I'm going to move my hand so you can see a little bit better. We have done all of the heavy lifting. You have all of the shapes that you need to create a really cool zebra. Now let's go from the tip of that triangle, we're going to ride down the triangle, pick your favorite line on that oval, and come back to your head. From here, we're going to go where we drew that first oval, we're going to do a, a little bit of that and then ride down that diagonal line there. So give a little curve there and go straight down. Next up, we are going to go around the edge of this circle. So just trace around the edge of that circle. You're picking your favorite line there. So at this point, you're deciding how wide, how skinny, how tall. Um, you're deciding those things now. So this is what's going to give your drawing some character and make it uniquely yours. If it doesn't look exactly like mine, that's wonderful. It's, it's your drawing. So from here, we're going to go down this triangle and then hop onto this rectangle. So follow those lines down. Down we go. From there, we're gonna go, that circle we drew for the top part of that nose there, we're gonna go a little bit around that circle. And then we're gonna go around the edge of this nostril, just like that. Then we're gonna go around and give it that smile. Around we go. And stop there. Let's add in that mimicking shape now. Mine got kind of drawn over. I just want a hint of a highlight right there. So just go a little bit outside that, that arc you just made. Create another mimicking one there. And then from there we're going to go around the edge of that bottom circle. Then we're going to go up the diagonal line onto the connecting triangle. I did forget a few triangles here, so we'll add those in um, when we go to add in our stripes. Their noses have these little angles here. All right, we're not going to do anything on this just yet. Uh, let's go in and do our eye. We're going to plant our wrist and trace right over that arc that we drew, and then go around that circle and around the inner circle, leaving that highlight, and fill in your eye nice and black. From here, we're going to add in some eyelashes. Now you might see in a lot of drawings where people draw their eyelashes up above. We're actually going to draw them straight lines right over the eye because that's where they actually would live. So touch your marker down to that arc you just created. Touch it and flick it out at an angle just like that. You'll cover up your highlight just a little bit, but that's going to give you some actual eyelashes. Now let's go over on this eye. We're not seeing that eye. It lives on the other side of the head. Let's touch and flick out right here for a few eyelashes. I'm just going to do maybe three. I like to do things in odd numbers, so it's just a simple touch and a flick. All right, let's go. Let's see. Let's go back up to the top here and do this ear. On this ear, we do see a little bit of a curve here. So we're going to start in on the head, go a little around this oval, and then up onto the triangle. Go ahead and do that. Curve it around, go up onto your triangle. From there, we're going to ride the triangle down and start to curve it around a little bit. Inside that ear, we do see this inside oval. So go ahead and trace around your lines there. That just kind of gives you like this part would be like the top of the ear and this part would be the inside of the ear. Now we're going to do the neck. So go ahead and trace over that line you drew there for the neck and hop onto that connecting triangle just like that. Very good. And then 
same thing, bottom part of the neck. You're going to go down. This time you're going to let that overlap, and then you're going to draw that diagonal line there. All right, let's switch back to our pencil. We are ready to add in our zebra's stripes in those few triangles that I forgot. Um, let's add in the triangles first so we don't get confused. At the base of this rectangle that we drew on the long part of the zebra's nose, we're going to add in a little diagonal line here. That's going to give us a, um, a nice little detail. Actually, make it up just a little bit higher. Right there. And then same thing on the other side. A little connecting triangle there. Then we need one more from where we had the mouth over to that diagonal line headed back toward the jaw. This will all get filled in nice and dark. Okay, I was trying to figure out the best way to explain the zebra stripes to you. So here goes. We have a few sections that help us decide what angles our stripes are gonna live in. So let's start at the top of the zebra's head. Um, the top of their head from that arc that we drew above that diamond, these stripes headed out toward the side of his face. These all point over in this direction. They stem from the center line and they just kind of go over. Now the stripes are, um, so just kind of head from that center line, head over to the outer edge of your zebra's face, just like that, all along that edge of the diamond. So you're gonna follow from that arc, from there, the edge of the diamond, head out to the side of the face. I'm doing two lines. One would be like the top, and one would be the bottom, and then inside that, that's what will get colored in. Um, these are not straight lines. They're diagonal and they're wavy and there's really no right or wrong way to make them. They're all different on every single zebra. Now, headed back up. If you look at a zebra, you will see where we drew those three lines with our pencil, you'll see that the stripes line up with the stripes that are in their mane. So for this section, right in front of the ear, it would be like a triangle right here. These are going to connect up to the stripes on the mane. So this first one would just connect over to that ear. And then this next one would maybe go in front of the ear and come back up. Same thing with this one. Make them nice and wavery. Let your hand shake. That's where that comes in handy at this point. They're just kind of coming down toward the eye. All right. Now from the eye, where we drew that second little arc above that eye, I'm going to connect some of those shapes all the way down to that. All right, so we've got some going off to the left, some pointing off to the right. Now let's do the center of our zebra's nose. These stripes kind of stem from this guideline that we drew down the middle, and they also follow along the top part of that diamond shape and they follow along the bottom part of the diamond shape. So we're going to start at the top of that diamond shape and we're going to go out to the edge and then ride down that rectangle and then do the next line on that. I have a space on mine that has nothing so I'm just going to add in a little shape there. These are very, very, very forgiving. Um, I'm going to give a line that goes right down the center. You decide where are yours going to live. I think the only important part to note is that they follow along some of these guides. That just gives them the shapes that you see. Um, you may also see where one line has a few that branch off and come back up to it. You can add in some of those. Again, we're just kind of going down that center ridge following over to the diamond and then down to the nose. They're all different. I guess they're, they serve almost like fingerprints on people. So there's really no right or wrong way to do them. They just need to be angled in the directions I'm suggesting. All right, this section of our zebra, these lines arc up from the jaw so we are going to plant our wrist and move our hand in that natural motion it's going to go in. And we're going to add in a few.
few shapes here. Now these, they arc up, but they also end right along, I'm gonna do a funky one there, they end right along that jaw. That's why we didn't draw any marker there. We're gonna let our stripes define our jaw there. So kind of following along the edge of that jaw and pointing up toward the eye, draw in some shapes there. Once you get to that last little edge of, the, of your circle, um, we're gonna switch directions again. Underneath their eye, they have a nice mark that is almost like uh, angled up toward the eye. We're gonna have one about there and then point it down to the nose. This next section, they come straight down from the ear. So from the ear, head down to the jaw, add in just a few stripes there. Now for the neck, where we had this guideline here, everything that lives off to the left of that is going to angle in like this. Everything off to the right is going to angle up like this. You could do these in a couple different ways. If you wanted to draw a great big oval, you could. Or if you just want to do um, some angles coming down, again, like I said, these are very organic shapes. Um, we are all going to have, they're all going to be different. But in the middle here, right where we have our guide, there's nothing. There's a nice white area there. So make sure you leave some white space there. Um, these are all very individual. So headed down, I am planting my wrist and letting those arc in the natural way that my arm is going to bend. Now I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to start up at the top and I'm going to go down and around my jaw. Put a nice little hook at the end. Every once in a while I'm making it fatter at the top and I'm kind of drawing in a little V there. Now these do sort of line up with the mane, but not 100%. So you're just kind of creating a little pattern for yourself here. No right or wrong way to do it. Just make sure they're angled in the way that I suggested. And you'll end up with something pretty cool. All right, we're gonna stop there. Now we're gonna switch back to our marker. It's complicated today, guys. Let's start with our main. Um, where you drew your pencil guides with the three uh, lines straight up, we're just going to go right over those. You're going to touch and flick so they're nice and loose at the top. Touch your marker down and flick it up like that. Going right over those shapes you already drew. They don't have to match up exactly. Now let's hop down along the neck and do the exact same thing. Touch and flick. You may end up making these wider than they were originally, or maybe they're a little thicker. Um, they are pretty, uh, pretty much the same length. Um, so I had one there that if I drew that in pencil, I would erase it. But now I got to figure it out because it's in marker. You may have some of those, and you know, just remember, zebras probably have bad hair days too. So if it's not exactly what you want. That's fine. Okay, now we're gonna do something kind of fun. Where we had that oval at the top and that oval at the bottom, the zebras have where their mane is white at the, at the base and those white stripes that we created by doing nothing, um, the tips of their mane, it's all black. So we're gonna go now down from the shapes that we created, those guides, pick your favorite area and we're gonna flick down from that all the way down and around we go. This kind of gives it that uniform shape. I'm just kind of moving my wrist as I curve around those shapes. Now this one, I'm choosing the fatter line that might help me make up for where I had the little lines that I didn't want. You decide where are your lines gonna go. They're just a short little touch and flick from that oval you drew in the beginning headed down toward the zebra's body, pointed in that same direction. And that's gonna give you that darker edge. Next up, we're gonna fill in some of our stripes. Let's start in the upper left-hand corner in that ear. The tip of this ear is black. So almost where we had that triangle there, I'm just gonna nice and loosely go over that. Now for the stripes, 
Um, you can make them nice and crisp, or you can let them be a little, like, see how this one isn't super crisp? You can let them be like that, too, if you want to. So I'm going to go up to where I had that curve, and I'm going to draw in my stripes. If I'm drawing and filling in faster than you, you can pause me and um, fill in your stripes and then hit play when you're ready to go. I'm just going to start off to the left hand side and follow my lines. If I invent them, invent some that I didn't sketch in along the way, that's fine. Um, you know, there's, like I said, no right or wrong way to do these shapes. Can you start to see your zebra coming together there? I'm going to do this little triangle here. If you color outside of where your exterior line was, just fatten that line a little bit and that'll make up for it. Let's do the nose real quick. Um, for the nose, we are going to go down this triangle and then you can hop on the top part of that circle and up that triangle. So it's going to be a shape about like that. And then it's going to go down the rectangle, hop onto that circle, and over to that. We're going to fill in on the nostril. Everything in this nose is going to get colored in except for that little highlighted area that we drew. So let's fill in this whole area. Now it's okay on this part if you want to just kind of back and forth and back and forth and make that nice and loose. It's not a crisp line. For the left side of their nose, we are going to color over that whole oval that we drew. But because we put that oval there, we get the perfect bump where that nostril would live, and it makes our drawing more believable. Alright, we're filling in this whole shape here. Leaving our highlight, that just gives a hint, because it's such a dark marker, um, that just gives us a hint of where that actually lives. Same thing. Along the bottom there, we're going to leave that highlight and then we're going to fill in back to where that back triangle is and down. Just like that. I'm doing so good. This is kind of a long one. All right, let's go ahead and fill in the rest of our um, ovals, or sorry, our stripes. Actually, join me on the on the jaw. And the rest of it is just kind of filling in how, what you drew. But for the jaw, because we didn't outline that jaw, we are going to use these shapes that we drew to define that edge. So when you trace down your shapes on your jaw, when you get to the base of that circle, make that line nice and crisp. The rest of them don't need to be nice and crisp, but that one, it helps define that shape. See that right there? That, that helps you get that shape and it makes it look like the edge of the jaw. So I'm just tracing over these so you can see where they're going to live. And this one, I happen to have one right on the edge of my jaw circle. I'm just going to fill them in. You do the same. At this point, if they're not perfect and they're not super crisp, perfectly fine. Like I've said in past tutorials, drawing, um, everybody always says, oh, I can't draw because I can't make it perfect. Drawings are not perfect. Um, and that's what makes them perfect. They're perfectly imperfect is what I like to say. Those little things that you look at and you say, oh, that's a mistake. Those are the things that give your drawing character and life, actually. Those are the things that um, drawings and paintings and art are, are made of. They give it energy and they give it life and they make it yours, specifically yours. So um, make your marks with confidence and um, let them be what they will and you're going to just feel really proud of yourself when you're all done. All right, I'm going to move up and do this one underneath my eye, just like that. All right, I'm going to go down the middle of the nose now. You decide what area you're doing. Go ahead and fill them in. If I had a fast forward button, now is when I would hit it. But because we're doing this together, we'll just take our time together. We're all doing the same thing. When this is all done, I will um, share this to uh, YouTube. I have a channel there now, so if you want to see all the videos um, in a different platform, you can check out YouTube, Rebecca Inc. I -N -K, there. And um, I also do a time lapse. I don't know if you've seen those, but um, that's kind of fun to see how we did it super fast. 
So I post that to Instagram and Facebook. And if I can figure it out, I'll add it onto YouTube too. I'm new to that platform. That one kind of seemed intimidating, but lots of new things during this time frame, huh? All right, I'm up above the eye now, and I'm just going down and back up, filling in my stripes. Can you see our zebra coming together? I think he is going to be super duper cool. Can't wait to see what you drew. So send me your drawings. And Mary Jo Douglas, I hope you enjoyed drawing this with me today. Can't wait to see your zebra. See how the way we angled the shapes in those different zones on our zebra helped to define and give it depth? I'm on to my neck. Again, if I am going faster than you are, pause me. Fill in your stripes, hit play when you're done, and I will be here. After we fill these all in, we're just going to go over our drawing with our eraser and erase all our lines, and, and we're going to have a super cool zebra. Around I go. What kind of shapes did you end up creating? Now, if you wanted to get um, really creative, I've seen some really fun um, drawings of zebras online where, you know, maybe uh, you don't do this part. Maybe you've just outlined your shapes and you're going to come back and you're going to make a rainbow zebra. Or you're going to come back and um, draw something inside these. I don't know. You can do all kinds of really cool stuff with this zebra. You can also use a lot of these shapes that we drew today, minus the stripes, and you could draw a donkey, and even a horse. The only thing you would alter uh, for the horse would be the mane. Their manes don't stick straight out. You kind of do a combination of out and then falling over the, the neck of the horse. Almost done. A little bit left. I'm going to add in one. I feel like I have got too big of a gap there. You can do the same on yours. See how uh, they're not super set in stone, these stripes. So it's kind of fun to draw them because there's no right or wrong there. You just draw the shape you, you see. Fill it in so there's not a lot of white space. Now, these, when I was reading about the zebras, um, they were saying, you know, they're all, all their stripes are slightly different, and the reason that they have them is when they stand in a herd, um, so when they stand with lots of other zebras, uh, the stripes get confusing for their predators, and they can't tell where one zebra starts and the other begins, and they kind of read as a larger group or a larger animal. It makes it harder for them to be attacked. All right, you guys, super, super proud of you. This one is cool. I'm going to switch back to my guide. You grab your eraser. I'm going to switch to my guide because I drew this one in pencil, and I'm going to erase right along with you. I am using my uh, hand to steady my paper, and I'm just simply erasing my pencil lines at this point. Follow your steadying hand, follow along, and kind of scooch it as you erase. If you have an area that you drew that is kind of dark, just take a second and go over it a few times. Um, I use the studying hand so I don't crinkle my paper. And just simply erase all of your lines. If you don't have a white eraser like I do, you can use the end of a pencil eraser, that works too. Or if you have a pink eraser, um, that works too. See, I, was, I didn't move my hand and I crinkled my paper. I hate that, that's a, that's a bummer. All right. Back up. Now I'm focused on moving my hand along with my drawing. We drew a super cool zebra. Send me your drawings. I will put them up on my website under the interact tab. Um, Rebecca Inc. I -N -K dot com. It's down here. Rebecca Inc. I -N -K dot com. I'll put your drawings up on there under the interact tab so that you can see them. Uh, check it out. People are sending me the coolest stuff. Um, you can use this as an activity with your your family during this time when we're all at home. Um, 
You can also find me on Instagram at Rebecca Inkabink and see what I'm working on in the studio. And then you can find me on Facebook at Rebecca Ink and also on YouTube, Rebecca Ink. All right, thank you for drawing with me today. I can't wait to see what you drew. Um, one more thing, if you have an, if you need an activity for the afternoon, on my website, I have some downloadable coloring pages. They're just a dollar. If you wanna download a coloring page and color it and send it to me, I'll also put that up on the Interact tab. And um, I will see you tomorrow. Thanks for drawing with me. Stay healthy. Bye.